What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of 10K on the Bay. This is our weekly reseller chat with Catherine, Catherine's Closet, and Hustle B. Ken. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for joining us. You haven't missed, you've missed us for a couple of weeks because we've been busy. It's Q4, but we're ready to get back into it and talk about random reseller stuff. Catherine, how was your week? Long time no see. Haven't made fun of you in over 10 days now. Yeah, no, it's been refreshing. Like, I feel my self esteem is like definitely doing better. Um, no, it's been good. School's been school's been good. Life's been good. Um, eBay sales have been good, even though I haven't been working as I should, and I know that. Um, but I've been constantly relisting, and sales have been regular. So that's awesome. Everything's been happy go lucky, like no problems, which is r rare, but I'm happy with it. Amazing. Hustle B, what's up? Um. Everything's good. Uh, just got back from our trip with uh, Glenn Dossler Hacks in Chicago. And, you know, did that in the weekend prior to that. It was a friends and family discount so with Nike. So I was just, you know, buying a lot of inventory. And I think now, you know, like I'm trying to get to 30K for this month. Um, I'm a little bit. A couple thousands behind uh, as far as trends would concern, but I'm expecting more uh, sales, you know, after Black Friday and stuff like that. So really right now it's just sit down, relax and watch and see what happens. That's right. All that hard work this whole year to prepare. I mean, you've honestly been preparing for Q4 since like August. So it's not like a brand new thing for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I definitely think like especially shoe sales and whatnot those are going to peak right after thanksgiving when everyone's like because everyone's thinking about christmas but after thanksgiving like it's like okay christmas is in, a, is in a month like i gotta buy gifts and shoes are you know an obvious go-to so i definitely think the end of november you'll be seeing like any trends you're missing now will probably definitely show up then yeah, no, I, and I think also there's like a little bit of a lull before the storm. So mm -hmm. people are going to be chilling um, before they start shopping. And, you know, Thanksgiving weekend is huge. Everyone's at home. They're full. They've eaten seconds, thirds, fourths, and they're sitting on their phone and they'll be buying stuff. So everyone get your stuff listed as soon as possible. Get your FBA shipments sent in. It's pretty much the last week. If you want to get them in before uh, to be eligible for um, Christmas, before Christmas, mm -hmm. you got to get it in right now. Um, so what's going on in reseller world? How, how was Chicago? Chicago was so cold. Uh, when we were there, they had a uh, fall and uh, Glenn was cold from a guy from Texas. So uh, it was fun. Uh, so uh, we did a meet up there. So it was cool uh, to get to meet with uh, a lot of people that have followed our journey and stuff like that. So that was definitely cool. And, now it's just more about like you know planning for next year uh it's really just looking forward to next year now i'm pretty much nailed my store down on where i want it to be and where how much inventory i want so it's now it's a little bit more about maintaining really uh, next year we're trying uh, we're planning to move as well so those are the things that i'm just trying to look forward to that's cool. Um, I just want to point out something that is related to that because Ken and I had discussed about potentially selling lower ASP items, right? And I want to bring up the examples. Listening to uh, Robert Herjevic, he's the, the Shark Tank guy that has a security company. And he has a company um, that does the ugly Christmas sweaters. Um, and they're, yeah. I, and I forget, it's like Tipsy Elves or something. Yeah. And um, they're $90. It's a $90 ugly Christmas sweater. And that's, wow. you know, like it's very expensive. And the margin on it is ridiculous because obviously it's just yarn. It's not anything really that special. But um, the obvious thing to increase the market share was to introduce a $50 sweater. Because they're like, we're already crushing it at the $90 level. If we introduce a 50 to get younger people to buy it, then we'll have a larger market share. And they actually mm -hmm. sort of ruined their their sales growth by doing that because they the ninety dollar sales stopped. Those people bought the fifty dollar one. They didn't get wow. any new cust. They didn't get any new customers. Mm -hmm. So Robert, and now back they have to, to push a lot more volume, 
which a lot more expense came in. Right, more volume, more inventory, more everything, and, and it just started to add up. And so they actually just found different types of items, like pajamas or something that they could sell for ninety dollars, and that made the company rebound. So they got rid of the cheap stuff and just made another model that was expensive and kept adding to that. So Ken has done that by shifting, not only selling one kind of shoes, he switched to different kind of shoes. So you know, it wouldn't be that unusual for Ken to start selling high-end women's shoes, even. It's somewhat right, right. related. Yeah. Like I even now, like my the percentage of women's shoes is like around ten percent in my inventory. So I you know, like right now, so I'm going to a Nike outlet, I automatically just you know, dabble on half of it. I don't even try to go the other half. So uh, you know, just looking at that, so much, you know, so much growth and just really learning that, you know, it's already shoes, so I just have to find which sells faster, the color and the size. Of course, you know, we have to consider Catherine's size too, you know, it's kind of hard to find. So <laughs> that's something I need to master. For sure. And I also want to point out something interesting. Not everybody sells expensive stuff, right? If you have a lower ASP, I definitely recommend if you have a lower ASP to try to um, sell a lot of the same things so processes become fast, storage, you know, shipping, if you sell all the same thing, you know, Ken and I are in a mastermind group with someone who sells cards and they have a system to try to ship 50 to 100 cards in an hour, right? You would need right. system to increase your volume, which is totally fine. In fact, most mm -hmm. of the people who make a ton of money in the country sell stuff that's cheap. Most people, you know, the higher ASP requires skilled sourcing. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's either a volume game or you have the you know high price game. Yeah. Well, oh, Catherine, what would you consider a low price item? Like, what's a low ASP? Do you think? That's a question. Oh well, I mean it. It depends. Like, I don't know. I mean, a low average selling selling price. I don't know if if you're like if that guy that's selling cards. You know, you never know what it could be, or I don't know. I'd say low is under like ten dollars, but I don't, I don't know. It, it's it's hard to say because it average selling price matters, but if you're if you're buying it for one cent and selling it for ten dollars, then it doesn't matter. You know, so I don't, I don't know. I would be surprised that the dollar store doesn't have high margins. You know what I mean? But then I would be I would be surprised if desktops had good margins cuz they're like expensive but they're also expensive to make and store and ship. You know, I can't yeah. imagine. Yeah. No, I just I and I was telling Ken about this before we started. I just completely like updated my inventory system and it's wonderful like it's making life so much easier already i basically i went to the dollar store and bought like 60 hangers and because i had had like all the really nice stuff or like the nicer stuff hung up or you know like materials i knew would wrinkle instantly and um then i was like you know what i'm just gonna hang up everything because i had had a bin that was like half folded women's shirts, folded, you know, shorts, whatever. And I had it all organized. But in the morning, I do my shipping before school. So I'm trying to get that done as quick as possible. So I end up just like tossing the bin, you know, and like trying to find what I need, which completely defeats the purpose. So I hung everything up and it is making life 100% easier just because I have room for that. I don't have a ton of inventory. Do you number them or just hang them up so you can see it visually? I just have it so I can see it visually, but I have it organized by like um, tank tops, short sleeve, long sleeve, short sleeve shirts, long sleeve shirts, dresses, and jackets. Could Jacob ship for you? Is it organized enough? Yeah, I, he could. I mean, he doesn't know how to ship, but like he could find it. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, that's all he, he, he could figure it out if he could find it. That's the part that. I could not convince him to wake up when I wake up every morning and do eBay shipping. <laughs> I can, I do it pretty quickly because I usually, you know, like I'm not shipping out a bunch a day, like a few items, you know. 
and if it usually like if the night before I realize like oh for some reason I have like an influx and I don't want to ship like five plus items or ten items the next day I'll do it that night I mean it's not bad I enjoy it okay. I like doing it in the morning so what's your what's your schedule look like in the morning you wait do you wake up and start shipping immediately no I wake up get ready get dressed whatever drink coffee <laughs> and then at around seven o'clock, I wake up at six. At around seven o'clock, I start shipping, and I have to leave by seven thirty. Generally, is is a life without coffee worth living? I don't know. There are a few mornings where I've forgotten coffee, or where like one morning we ran out of K cups. Oh my god! And that was a day where I would had to be at school till two thirty. And I usually don't like trying to buy anything at school because everything's expensive. But I bought a coffee that morning, like. There was no, it had to happen. I was, I was dying. Ken disappeared. I'm sure he'll be back. No, I was considering not drinking coffee. And then I actually decided I was going to have two cups a day instead of one. So I doubled up and my life's been way better. So I like coffee a lot. It tastes really good to me. Um, I like making it. It's a nice break. Um, Ken is back. He's, she, or S. Hankins says that um, K-cups aren't real coffee. What do you say to that? They are. I buy like, the, and I don't buy breakfast blend. Like I buy the darkest roast I can find. And we also have like, um, there's this great company that we love, and this is not like sponsoring, but I'm just saying it's really good coffee. Um, what kind of coffee? Huh? What kind of coffee? What brand? Well, sometimes I like when I'm buying K cups, I just get whatever I can find at like Walmart or whatever. But. Um, I, uh, the main one I do is called, or the one we like is called Black Rifle Coffee Company. And it's a veteran owned, um, and like run company. And they like, they, um, I don't remember the word. They basically process, it goes from bean to ground. So like when you pr make your order, that's when they take the whole beans and they grind it for you or do whatever they need to. And they have a bunch of different roasts and they make really dark roasts and then like extra caffeinated roasts, which is the one Jacob likes. Jacob wow, wants it to be like as caffeinated as possible. And it's more expensive. Like we buy the ground because the K cups are, it's like ends up being like a dollar per K cup, but it is so good. <laughs> like it is, it's a treat. It's really delicious. You can get the refillable K cups. Yeah, that's what we have. That's what, what okay. we buy the ground and we use that little refillable cake cup. But yeah, they're, I love I love their coffee. It's really good. You know, the lighter the roast, the more caffeine, right? Huh, yeah, I know. But here's the here's the issue. Oh my gosh. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> it's the delivery man. Um, anyway, yeah, but here's the issue. Jacob doesn't like the taste of light roast. But he wants all the caffeine. So black rifle, but black rifle makes it taste like dark roast. Like it's 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 got that deepness to it, but it's like three times the caffeine. It's insane. I can't, light, I can't drink light roast. It, it yeah, it tastes like I'm drinking. It's like if um yeah the the little bit of coffee that always gets left at the coffee pot. If I put like a cup of water in that, that's what light roast tastes like to me. It's awful. What about cold brew? I like cold brew coffee. I've only I've never made it at home, I've, but I've gotten it. There's like this coffee shop on campus that makes a really good cold brew. I want to make some at home. What about tea? I like tea. Why is this? What does everyone else think about tea? Why is it just me? I'm like getting I'm getting questioned. Um, I like tea. I mean, like I like all kinds of tea. I don't know. And I don't. Huh? Just kidding. No, I mean, yeah, tea is tea is great. Coffee is great. I think it's important. What about water? I drink water like throughout the day, but I'm not there. Oh my gosh, there used to be these, used to be these guys in high school that used to carry around like the giant water jugs. <laughs> oh my god! And then I, oh, one day so, in class, this kid spilt his, and my teacher had a corn. Like it went everywhere. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was. They deserved it too. It was funny. Oh, I'm Ooh, we have Scott from Daly City, where the Filipinos reside in the Bay Area. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah, I love. Yeah. It. I we need to go there. You guys need to. You need to go there when you come. Yeah, we'll vlog it. We will vlog it. They're coming in the springtime. You should come, Catherine. What? January. It's not spring yet. What should I do? I don't understand. Where am I supposed to go? Anyone gonna tell me? No. Uh, we're going to. Uh, we're going to uh, California. California. I have to put on a sweater because it's like seventy degrees here. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. So uh, we're going. Yeah. We're going to uh, California uh, in January. So here's a good question from Boston's Best Flips. He's a new seller, he or she. Can anyone recommend where to learn about shipping? Hmm? Okay. Um, I'll just tell you how I learned, and it's not to sponsor anyone or whatever, but um, just another seller. It's like an hour and a half long shipping video. And that is the only reason I was able to ship. I thought it would be easy. Someone bought my first item and I was like, oh, so excited. I went to ship and I just stopped. <laughs> and I, I had to sit there and watch her video. It, that's the only reason I was able to learn. So. No, it's a great video. I like that video. I learned a lot from that. I recommend you just you withdraw all the money from your bank account and then put it in an envelope and I'll show you how to mail it to me. No, I'm just kidding. I don't. I don't know. Like, I think it's important when you go to print label to look at all the different options. Um, I like ordering all the supplies from USPS.com because they're free. I recommend ordering one of every box. I know some people say don't do that, but I don't see the harm in that. Um, you can make Franken boxes out of them as long as you ship priority. Um, but make sure don't make Franken boxes out of at a flat rate. Some post offices don't like that. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't know if that's actually a rule as long as you ship priority, but I just try not to use the flat rate. And I like to look at all the different uh, envelopes, containers, order some poly mailers, just get into it. I think everyone should have an eBay store forever. That's how fun I think eBay is. Right. I agree with that. Uh, for some odd reason, I don't know where I learned how to uh, ship stuff. I just, I guess I'm just, I just experimented when I started. And, and, I don't know, like there was just no guide for me. It was just simple reading instruction for me. Oh, well, I, I'm glad Kendra's better than all of us. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, it was like I didn't know anybody. I didn't know YouTube when I was starting. Uh, I mean, I didn't know Instagram community when I started. I just saw, I learned from YouTube. But, I mean, eBay's made it so easy, though. Like, you know, as long as you wait it right and stuff like that. Although I don't mess with flat rates a lot. Uh, hardly, I've only shipped like two or three flat rates ever uh, because they were too big. Uh, you know, they were more expensive if I ship priority. So I really don't consider flat rate unless, you know, unless they're over four pounds in priority. Yeah, I ship everything um, first class just because all, nearly all my stuff is under a pound. So I don't have to worry about it usually but whenever I was making my first listing and I got to the shipping section I wasn't I just wasn't sure what to I don't wanted to have it right because I had been watching reseller videos for a long time or for I don't know a while before I actually started to resell and um, I had just heard stories of like oh I made this huge mistake on shipping and I was like I don't want that to happen to me so I'm gonna go watch this video and learn about it. Oh, I'm trying to get up with the chat. I know, lots yeah. of chat tonight. Thanks, guys. Put your questions in there. Um, let us know if you drink coffee or tea. Uh, if you like the flat rate envelope, give it a thumbs up. I love the flat rate envelope. I think you should learn how to sh use all three of them. The regular cardboard, the legal cardboard, and the Tyvek plastic one. All those are amazing. Um, I recommend if you're going to go ghetto and ship something nice in the cardboard flat rate envelope, which looks like like this, make sure you wrap it in bubble wrap or something before because it's going to get beat up on the way. And they're made out of paper. So like, um, I have seen people build a box, put a mug into it, put it into the cardboard envelope, hit it with a golf club and throw it off a building and it still didn't break. So you can do it. It's going to look really ugly. The presentation's yeah. going to suck, but it will arrive safely. Yeah. I'm so sad that they that our eggs got stolen. 
I know. Wolves. We already talked about this. It's very sad that our packages were I know, but I'm still upset about it because I wanted to know the result. Like, I know yeah. some of them broke, but I want to know. Like, I want to know which eggs survived. Yeah. <laughs> There's got to be some. <laughs> Gosh. Ooh, okay, goodness. wait. So now that we're talking about coffee, since we're on the subject, who all drink coffee black? Because I like black coffee. Like, it's okay, but if I can get some, oh my gosh, I just grew up on creamer. Like, my dad puts, like, half a cup of, like, his coffee is, like, half coffee, half creamer. So, yeah, like, that's what I grew up with. Um, I like, I mean, I used, so when I had a coffee shop back in the Philippines, I used to hate creamer. It was just all straight black, and it was all espresso, and, you know, it was just, like, strong coffee. I guess I just did that for like for like something quick, right? And now I used to I use brown sugar. So that's what I use. I use I use the raw uh, turbinado sugar and I just put a teaspoon of creamer just to have some taste. But I use the creamer that has like a hazelnut or caramel taste just for the taste. But I I hardly use a creamer without a flavor because it's either I like it just black or I'll have it with a hint of flavor with the creamer. I like to get it from McDonald's and I order 20 creamers and 20 sugars. That's how <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try that. Go ahead. I'm like a creamer connoisseur. Like I love all different types of creamers. I I remember one day I came from the, from the store and they had like I two for four dollars thing for creamers. So of course I got four, and I had like one of each different flavor, and it's wonderful. It's like going to a cop when I wake up in the morning. It's just on how I felt. I have um, pumpkin spice whenever it was like a month ago. Um, regular vanilla, hazelnut, white chocolate chip, and then I actually got a. Um, Oh gosh, it's like southern butter pecan. Oh, wow, that's the best that's one. Crazy. That's the best one. That is the best creamer. So let me bring this up. Um, so K Swiss did a collab with Gary V, right? The sneakers. That's right. They're whack. They, they dropped it last night. Site was crashing bad. Site was crashing. People were buying them, right? And this morning, a bunch of sizes sold out. So I creeped in and I bought eight pairs <laughs> to resell. <laughs> I, I think, do you think they're going to do well? I think there's going to be hype with it because if he's not lying, he said the first two styles or colorway, at least the colorway, are limited. We'll so right out. now, the men's sizes sold out already at the website. the 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 two the two uh, sh the two styles sold out already. So I don't know what you're talking about. Worst case scenario, I can return it. You just yeah. like, what sizes did you get? Well, I, I bought what's left. I bought size eight and a half and ten and a half. Because the rest was sold out, and I bought a couple, yeah, something like eight, and yeah, nine, nine and a half, and ten was gone. Uh, Eleven and twelve were gone. How much are they? Well, the the le the black leather one was eighty five, and then the uh, fly knit type one is hundred ten. Dang. Did you did you like them? Me? Yeah. I think they're whack. Me too. I hate them. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I, I love the guy, but they're just whack. I like Talking about Gary V's shoes. What yeah. are they? They're Google just K-Swiss. K-Swiss. Uh, but Sorry, I he'll, found he'll get his Nike shoe one day when he buys the, the New York Jets. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I, I want to... Uh, uh, it's either I'm just going to keep two, right, for the long run. You know, just hide two. Uh, but the... Uh, I I actually found some coupon codes, and I'm not, I'm not gonna tell where I found them. 
<laughs> what are they? The black? Yeah, like black and green. Yeah. That looks like. The, that looks <laughs> like a basic shoe to me. Like, am I not seeing something magical happening here? No, like, well, it's a fur. It's the first entrepreneur that has a sneaker collab. I don't even know who this is. Wow. Chris <laughs> doesn't know Gary V is. It's all good. I'm she, doesn't need motiv she doesn't need motivation. She's already she's already motivated. She has to be out the door by seven thirty. She's already crushing. Right. Um you know, Gary V has this recent post that says that ninety nine percent of stuff doesn't matter. I right. am a hundred percent all in that YouTube and social media does not matter at all. If you got rid of it, your life would not be that much worse. It might be even better. Uh, I would disagree. I, I wouldn't. So? No, without social media, I wouldn't find this community, man. I wouldn't know you. I'm not. I'm just saying. You'd all be lucky, is what you're saying. <laughs> and then there's Catherine. <laughs> Whatever. If I never got on, if I never Googled good or gone into YouTube and searched Goodwill Outlet, I want to be tormented by the both of you. <laughs> this is a, this is an interesting point. Like, um, I've been using social media to try to create stuff right. and it's brought, it's attracted really, really, really cool people. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I think there's a difference between like, you know, when you see Catherine has her channel, Hustlebee's providing, um, you know, useful stuff on, on your Instagram. This it's different when you're a creator, when you create content for people to, to consume, I think it's different. You also get a new oh, respect. True. When you're out there creating stuff like Catherine, your channel is awesome. Like you actually know how to edit. So it's really cool when you look at somebody who actually, I need to make videos so stuff. badly. Don't, it makes me feel bad. And like, actually I knew it was bad because I had someone message me and be like, oh, hey, have you been okay? Like, you haven't been on YouTube. And I've been like, oh, God. Like, someone's worried about my safety. That's how badly I need to get myself together. <laughs> like, someone is worried that I'm, like, dead in a hospital. I just haven't – I've been – and, like, don't get – I look at my reseller Instagram every day. Like, I check in on everyone. I watch all the stories. But I just haven't – I haven't been doing eBay stuff like I should, and no, I don't think anyone wants to hear about my school stuff. So I just like I haven't been posting. We do want to hear about it. We want to hear about all of it, everything. Oh, yeah. We want it because I see, you know, like I need to learn how to make Instagram stories. Like I woke up, my shoes, right. walking to the store. Here's my coffee. I don't know how to make it like entertaining, <laughs> but it's so. I I, I want to make the. I'm gonna add that every single day. I'm going to work. I'm gonna. I'll do. I'll start doing it every day. Cause I did it for a while there. I think it's really entertaining though. It's like I woke up. I'm gonna go list something. I'm going to the post office. I, I just think cool. it's really entertaining. I like it. I love it. I just think it's cool to watch, like to do it, and then it keeps playing, and it looks like it's yeah. Funny. It looks like they're continuously walking. I like it. Uh, uh, so uh, going back to that topic, ninety nine percent really don't matter. Um, I think everything else that's not related to what I'm doing does it. Like, like for example, mm. I don't like in my like the reason why like you know like I'm okay with moving to a different city because nobody else in my city matters to me besides the stores that I buy to. You know, besides the fa my family's not here, so I'm not really you know physically attached to anything here or emotionally. I mean, I had friends. But talking about, you know, like you're going to be the same as the circle of friends you're going to be, the average of, you know, the circle of friends you are. I, you know, I had to realize that and I had to cut them off because it was just they were just living for the weekend, you know, buy nice cars when they retire. But, you know, like there's nothing wrong with that. But that's not how, how I wanted to live my life. And, you know, like they scheduled their yearly vacation. And then that wasn't me, right? I wanted to go whenever I want to. So I had to find people that were sort of like that, that were more goal oriented, that was more about growth and, you know, not, not maintaining, uh, because I, th you know, that, that, that for me, not th everything else doesn't matter, but you know, this matters to me. Like I, I love hanging out with people. I love, you know, like the cool things that I get to do now because of the community I found, like, 
dude you know like i went to that pizza event that you did with ryan like that was amazing you know that that was for me me and my wife talk about that was like the the whole i feel like the stepping stone that created all of this i i agree so much like um hmm I need to re- I need to retract my statement because my life is the bomb now because of social media and um, all this you, stuff. Man. But you know, I, just, I, think, I think it's easy to get distracted. Like... Was my point? Easy to get yeah. distracted was my point. True, true. Because like, no, I said your life would be boring without me and Catherine without this Tuesday hangout. What would you I be know, doing? Suck. Yeah. You- the rest yeah, of my week is basically worthless. The ninety nine percent of the week that I'm not on this call is basically disposable. Yeah, you're, you're just sitting there on Wednesday and you're like, Oh, I get to see Kent oh, it's another six days. <laughs> <laughs> that happens every day throughout the day until yeah. it's Tuesday. Yeah, see Chris probably would like intentionally slow down his shipping process just to make the day faster. <laughs> He's yeah, been probably. shipping for nine hours, but it's almost Thursday. <laughs> I think this is a really cool conversation because you, um, you know, I feel like I, we are in a world where you can pick who you want in right. your life. This is very interesting. On social media, you can pick who you follow. Yeah, we can block somebody you don't you like. You can block somebody. That's a very <laughs> bizarre point. It's a very useful thing, too. Yeah. I mean, like, those are, yeah, when people say, like, social media is destroying everybody, like, I think it's, like, it should be helping everybody because, like you said, you can pick who you want to hang out with. You can pick who want to influence you, right? Like, like they're one of the main reasons why I, I, open, I made this Instagram account because I want to absorb everybody's knowledge that was, you know, anything that they were posting, the brands that they were doing, you know, buying, the, the, the you know, the progress that they're posting. I had to, you know, create this because I made this kind of like my an, an its own world, right? And to a point mm-hmm. that I don't even care about my my personal Instagram because what was it with, right? It's all about drama, like politics, things that doesn't really lo- brighten up your day, you know, things that doesn't push through, uh, push you to become better. So, hmm. so for me, like, I mean, like for me, this is very for me. It's the new healthy as far as social aspect of life for me is see i'm like yeah when uh, chris whenever you said like 99 percent of things in life don't matter i'm like the complete opposite in a good and bad way i think everything matters which like is good to a point because i'm very like i want everything to be done right i'm not gonna like slack something off just because i value one thing over another like i'm Like, I've never valued my sleep if I have something else to do. But um, I'm also, like, that gets the best of me sometimes because I'm uh, too worried about little things that kind of don't matter. But I've always always kind of been that way. I think the way you do everything matters. The way you treat people, every every interaction matters, everything counts. Um, And this is something I really noticed on social media because it amplifies you. If you are a jerk it's going to make you a gigantic jerk. If you're nice, you can be nicer on a larger scale. Um, It's like a tool. I would say social media is a tool. Yeah. um, yeah. Chris, you know know what would make you nicer? Um, (laughs) (laughs) Anything would make me nicer. (laughs) Anything, really. I mean, if you just stop talking, that would probably make you nicer. But um, (laughs) no, uh, I was going to say, crap, I forgot what I was going to say now. Dang. Anyway, um, Chris could do so he could be nicer. Oh, yeah, Chris, you know, Ken already sent me a gift. I feel like, oh, that's true. You said it's your turn. <laughs> wait, what size are you? 13? <laughs> you 12. Wait, 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 wait. What size are you actually? I'm eight and a half. Eight and a half. Okay, look, okay, let's look at did any woman say what size shoe they were? I don't think so. Dang, I'm telling you, everyone's already confirmed that my feet are not big. So, uh, so there's a comment says, uh, a drummer said, I just tell people in real life, just unfriended you, bro. 
someone's yeah. talking to you and you're just like, yeah, I blocked you. Yeah, I blocked you. I mean, really, because like at the end of the day, right? Like you sometimes I, I said it there. Sometimes we get too caught up with other people's point of view on us uh, to a point that we're putting that more important than our own real happiness. Uh, you know, like peer pressure, parents pressure, uh, and slowly it's going, it should be going away because how we're wired throughout, you know, gener previous generation is if your dad was a farmer, you were a farmer. If you're, you know, like the last name Smith, everybody, all Smiths were, were, were actually steel worker because what do you call that? What, what are they? And what are the people? Uh, man, I, I lost uh, blacksmiths. Yeah, that's 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 one one story. Like everybody had, you know, all lineage did one trade, and then they just bartered, right? I'll make you this, and I'll give you corn in replace that you'll build my house or something like that. So we were so engraved that uh, what we did was because of our parents and the previous generation. Now with you know all the opportunities coming you could literally be whoever you want to be you know and at the end of the day too right you know i was growing up that i wanted to become a pilot and then now i audited myself like why did i want to become a pilot because pilot made more money so my dreams were or my ambitions growing up was just to make money and then i just associated it to a profession that had more money but really didn't have any meaning so that's a great point. Life, um, life speech by Ken. It is. That, that's, that's a motivational speech. Um, but I want to talk. I mean, you can pick and choose. This is the thing now. People say, or I know for sure, you can get depressed on social media if you compare yourself to somebody else. And so I just want people to realize, like, Zulily is this clothing company online. They list 9,000 items a day. Most people will not reach that. Right. So I don't actually get jealous. I'm just, I just look at them and I'm like, that's cool. How do they do that? Then I right. found out they have a listing robot that you just push a mannequin with shirt. You push a clothing item with, that's on a mannequin. You roll it into the machine and it pops out the other side in the listing. Like, that's pretty cool. That they have a machine that automates the whole process. That's how they're able to do it. So I'm not jealous. I'm actually inspired. I'm like, that's cool. I'm going to take a part of that. If I see something bad happen to somebody, I'm like, okay, that's cool. Let's find out what we can learn from that. Or maybe it truly is tragic and you take a second to enjoy the full spectrum. Like you can't have lightness without darkness. You want to look at the whole thing. Oh, the listing robot costs nine grand. It's, or I'm sorry, 90 grand. Um, it's called Smart Shoot or something. And it automatically deletes the background and edits it for you and gives you a bunch of different like green, white, black, whatever backgrounds you want so you can pick the best one and it automatically deletes the mannequin out of it so it's like a ghost mannequin. It's the cool uh, image where it's just the item. Like floating? Floating. So like, um, yeah. And that machine also does flat lay. So there's certain items that look better flat. So, um, you know, you look at companies that, um, like BHFO with 150 full-time listers, I mean, that's cool. I'm not jealous. I'm like, well, I, I guess maybe if the robot, um, like at BHFO, the bin comes to you via a robot, but like I can just walk to my bin. It's okay. Like I'm not jealous right. that a robot doesn't bring it to me yet. You know, like I don't need that yet. So right. I mean, it's cool. It I like, like watching it. a lot of stress. <laughs> it sounds like 150 <laughs> people that I now have to worry about. That's true. No, it's totally different. Oh, um, yeah. Like, that's why I ask myself, like, you know, like whenever I'm thinking like, oh, I want to get to 5,000 listings, but like, that's not possible with just me and my wife. That means more people, right? And then when that happens, that means more responsibility and liability on me. So I always ask myself, do I want to be a, just a specialty boutique or do I want to be Walmart? Right. And like, yeah, Walmart makes a lot of money, but you know, if I do it right, especially a specialty boutique will make a lot of money too. So it's just a matter of they want to run a warehouse or do I, do I want to run a profitable mom and pop shop? Uh, yeah. So that, 
I even realized today I want to run a really big home business. That, that's what I'm looking for. Like I don't, I don't actually don't have the desire to have a. I would rather have a big home business than a small outside business. Oh, that's cool. You know, so like, because it's different. There's a different overhead. Uh huh. You know, like if you have an actual retail front, it's different. You've got to design your your store. I would rather I would rather look for stuff than design my store, and have some cool stuff in there. And it depends on what you want to do. For some people, um, there's there's one of the um, sellers that I know in the group that has a three hundred dollar ASP. His goal is to get the two hundred items. <laughs> so I mean, like that's a totally different <laughs> mentality. Right? He's 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 married. He has kids. He's like, one day I'll get the two hundred items, right? And but this his stuff is three hundred dollars, so it's expensive. It's hard to find. He's trying to buy for one hundred, sell for three hundred. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy to find those things. Yeah, dang. Um, so Treasure Hunters is making this point. Isn't it better if you never reach five thousand because all your stuff's selling all the time? It depends on on what you're selling. Like if you have. Um, for example, a top rank 1,000 toy on Amazon, and you have 15,000 units, probably all 15,000 sell within 30 days. Right. Your toys rank that high. And then your job is to deal with the manufacturer and fly to China and make sure the quality control is correct. That's a different life, right? If you're right. scavenger life and you have 6,000 random pieces of treasure from the world, it's not going to sell very fast. You're not going to sell all in a month. You might sell one thing a day, five things a day, ten things a day. You have no idea. It just depends. Yeah. That's like, that's why it's, you know, like some people say, oh, well, I have 100 listings, but 500 items. And that's wonderful. And I wish, right? But like I'm buying things one by one. So whenever I'm making a listing, I can't. I'm going to profit from that one amount. Like I have to equate if I, if it takes me 10 minutes to list this one item, there's only one item there. That's a much, it's a whole lot different than whenever I was lucky and got 10 of the same sweater and I was able to make one listing that took me 10 minutes, but there are 10 items behind that. That's 10 sales. It's, it's everything's different. That's why, YouTube is so wonderful, I think, but it can also be so dangerous, like for new resellers, because you never know. Like, in, it, once you um, once you get into it, then you're like, you actually realize, like, oh well, that person, you know, I'm not going to be able to do that. You know, when you hear someone say, like, oh, I paid two dollars for this and made, you know, and sold it for fifty, and it's like, that's awesome. I want to resell. <laughs> it, you can get wrapped up in it, definitely. Now that now that you brought it up, Chris, that you want to have a, a large home business because me and my wife are looking for you know either apartment or a town home or renting a house, right? And then basically the scenario is like if I get an apartment, you know, it's gonna be like just one more bedroom bigger, right? Three bedroom apartment. Or if we move into a house or renting a house, spending two to three hundred dollars more, but it will have a basement and a two car garage. Yep. So I'm like, I'm like, whoa, that just changes a lot of things, right? And I could just stack it up, pile it up, and then just continue with my 15% sell through rate, right? Or 20% sell through rate. And that's, you know, we talk about how to make 100K peacefully, right? And I think, you know, like now I'm leaning more towards that because, you know, I, I remember this concept about, into, you know, one of the things how we get so stressed out is because we box uh, our lives into segments. And what worked for me is I've integrated my life. Uh, I've integrated everything I do to making money, to making having fun, to having friends, right? My friends are reseller. What I do, uh, what I sell are the things that I like, which are shoes. So everything's, I feel like everything's in harmony with each other. That's why I don't mind you know the clutter right if this were jeans all over me i would have a panic attack but their shoes i love them i love seeing them i even had to move my i even have to shift my mentality that i have to pre-pack because i love them i love seeing them so much in open like i just want them to, you know i just want to see them because i love it but now i have to pre-pack so now the compromise is i pre-pack them and i leave them open 
<laughs> so I can still physically see him. But yeah, so I think you know that's a really good point that you brought up. Like, what is that kind of life that you want to desire? Because if you have a warehouse, that's another overhead, and you have to go in and out there. You know, if something's missing or what, you have to. And then now, like now, I can just, I can list in the midnight when I can't sleep. I can ship at 2 a.m. in the morning when I just got off a movie or something like that. And that's what I love about, you know, our occupation or what we do to make money. Yeah, this is work-life integration. And you can also, like, as an example, if you want to run a reseller event locally, people will pay you to set it up. Right. You know, that's a good way to do it. Like, you know, Reezy Resells and I did an event. This is mm -hmm. his water bottle that I have two of. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we did an event locally, like, in March or April. Oh, yes. Uh, I remember that one. Yeah, the original reseller roast and 30 people came that we did not know and got them integrate with people. And, um, you know, we made like a hundred bucks each for putting together a reseller event that's valuable. And anytime you can do something that's valuable, like I, I think that's that's a perfect exchange of value. You, you create something, people pay for it. It's the same as eBay. You're going to get a negative feedback or a return if you don't deliver what you say you're going to do. It's like a perfect world. And eBay is sort of pure in a sense that it's like a market where you can kind of get an idea of what something is worth because millions of people use it. I actually had something interesting happen to me as a buyer um, on eBay. I had bought an item and it was actually coming from Germany. And I noticed I bought like a protection plan with it. You know, it's from like a separate company, but when you're buying it, you can like add, oh, would you like a protection plan? Add to cart. And I did that and I noticed that it had only charged me for the protection plan and nothing else. And so I called eBay and it, the actual item I bought wasn't in my purchase history or anywhere. Um, and in the email I got, it only talked about the protection plan. So I called them and I, I didn't know that this happened and that this is what would happen, but apparently the buyer was suspected of like, it was, it wasn't, um, it was like fake, like it was a fake item or it wasn't, um, I don't know. He had good ratings. So I, or I assume it's a, he had good ratings. So I was confused, but apparently if you, they, they suspended that listing and someone else's account. So I was like, Oh, well, can I purchase it if the item comes back up? And they were like, well, you know, um, maybe if he puts it back up, if he's cleared, but we can't verify this, this and that. And then I still got charged for the protection plan because I couldn't return it. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny. Like whenever I buy stuff on eBay, sometimes it's interesting. And it's also annoying whenever I know I'm getting charged for shipping like way too much. You know, <laughs> I, I know the item weighs under a pound and they charge me $8 for shipping. I get a little salty because I'm like, hey, so I know one, that, that costs like two seventy seven. <laughs> one hack you could actually do is when you're buying an eBay is you could sort uh, uh, by distance, and then that you know that it's gonna come quick, and then you can haggle them with a lot of the people that does free shipping. Right, for example, like me, uh, when I know the buyer is just within Ohio or Kentucky, I can give them like a five to seven dollar discount. Because I am calculating, you know, more like ten to twelve dollars for shipping. So that could be a hack when you're buying. Yeah, and I, I like to. Uh, I realize some people can't do math. Like I've had um, nineteen plus four dollars shipping, so twenty three total. And someone offers, how about twenty five shipped? <laughs> people don't. People don't know like what Except it is. So I, I I can get it. <laughs> um, or people will round up, right? They they offer me twenty five cents more than the counter offer I give them, so that it's around twenty eight or something. Mm -hmm. I just think people are funny. The world's full of funny people. Nothing annoys me more whenever like someone someone offered me like seventeen dollars for a twenty five dollar item, and I brought it down to I think 23 and then they came up to like 1950 so I was like okay how about 21 and then they countered back with 
twenty dollars and ninety five cents. <laughs> that's, that's what I declined. Like... Yeah, I declined that. <laughs> five that's, cents. That's a, that's a no brainer decline. Whenever I get that, it's like yeah. somebody else will buy it. <laughs> so when, when somebody, five I don't know if I shared this story before. Somebody did that to me. They were just kind of like being so cheap and like increasing their item and I was decreasing my price by five dollars. I actually countered offer with ten dollars more and they responded and said uh and they responded back to me, okay, I tell I'll take your last offer. I think they're just trying to test you or something like that. And then I love to do that when it's their last offer. And they literally have to message me. Like, hey, I'll take, you know, your offer. Can you change the price? <laughs> That that happened that happened to me. I I tried to buy these Barclays because I'm obsessed with Barclays for some reason, and I made six offers. They auto declined all six of them, and then I was like, I need two more offers. <laughs> <laughs> I messaged them, and then he said, "Your increments go up five dollars each." Okay, so he just lowered it to a buy now. Uh, so I was just increasing it five dollars at a time, seeing if I could hit the threshold. Right. And six times in a row, I didn't hit it yet. I ended at seventy. He said. When I messaged him, I need two more offers. He just gave it to me for eighty. Eighty, uh, he knew. Yeah, he knew. That was Pretty I, close. I was so annoyed. Nothing annoys me more, especially because like I buy a lot of stuff from eBay and um, or on eBay, and nothing annoys me more whenever people have m make an offer on like best offer for, um, just to like get people who are searching to be able to make an offer, but they have auto decline on all the way up to like their right now <laughs> price. And I was, oh, I was so mad the other day. And I would, I kept going up by like $3 at a time to try and hit the threshold. And I got within a dollar of the asking of the buy now price and it still auto declined. <laughs> I was like, okay, awesome. They so should have do that. Even eBay should be able to do that. It should be at least like, you know, the lease would be like 20% off or 10% off. Yeah. Oh. I also want to point out, like, let's say you buy an item for $40 and the lowest you're willing to accept is 75 plus shipping, right? That's the lowest you'll take. And you put it up for $100. I'm t I think it's legit to do $100 best offer, right? And have auto accept 75 and higher. That's your, your minimum. But auto decline, if somebody offers 70 and you, you auto decline, you would have made a deal if you counter offered you know, right, 80 right. for that. So I would yeah. say turn off auto decline. I don't get offended by a dollar. You know, it's, well, it's not maybe, offensive maybe to me. Maybe like 50% off offer. You know, I like still don't do the decline. Really? Like, like I do the no. deal for like 100 item, I would decline like 59. Because when they do 60, I could try to bring them up to 80. Yeah, no, That's I true. don't have... It's like have somebody could troll you and just I'll give you like a dollar, you know, a dollar offer. Which is sometimes it's not worth my time. People do troll, but what happens is you get a boost in the ranking when people make an offer because it means your item is desirable. So so I don't mind it. I like the, That's good. I like the, I like the boost. Let's so, do that. That, that's I don't mind thing. the, I don't mind the dollar offer at all. I'm like, thank you for boosting my ranking, troll. You know, like that's a, I that's a pretty. I appreciate. You. I need you. I you, have, you, you. You complete me. Yeah, I don't have auto decline or auto accept on. Like, I want to see every offer, and I'll reply to each of them. Like, I've got, you know, it takes me t what ten seconds to look at my phone and reply. You know, not, you know what I love the most is when I've countered offer like four or five people already. And then somebody buys it, like buy it. The price, and then cancels all the offer. You know, like like uh, offer retracted or something like that. I think eBay does that, right? So that they can't accept the offer on your end. I, I, you know, like it's, I mean, I get so happy, but you know, like I get so happy that it gets purchased at full price, but I get, I think I get so happy more that they missed out on the deal that I gave them. I know, spite I know, is so spite tasty. Is so tasty. <laughs> we'll All right, so we'll after, after, uh, not a reselling questions. Uh, what are you most excited about? 
Nothing reseller related. Nothing reseller related? Yeah. What am I most excited about? Most excited about in your life or something that you're looking forward to? Uh, Christmas, duh. Christmas is my favorite time of the year. I literally, like, we have a, a small attic and it's filled with Christmas stuff. I buy Christmas stuff year round. I, you know, what I'm I'll make a YouTube video. Yeah, like four months ago, I bought a Christmas decoration at a garage sale <laughs> and it's like five feet tall. I don't even, I have no shame with my love for Christmas. I, like, I will make a YouTube video. We live in a condo mm -hmm. and we have like a front door on the bottom. And I literally bought two inflatables that I have around my front door. <laughs> and the, and the, like the, and I know, like I'm on the HOA board and one of, one of the people on the HOA messaged me and said, oh, hey, like, are you, yeah, I like, you shouldn't put those out maybe because of the lawn crew. And I was like, I'll put a sign there. They can go around my inflatable. Like, this is Christmas. <laughs> we have a porch. I have it all strung up with lights. The inside of our already, house. already. Uh, no, but the day after Thanksgiving, bet okay. I will show you. My whole house will be Christmas decorated. Jacob, all right, you it back. as soon as it hits I November first, I'm like, Jacob, can I put the tree up? <laughs> He's like, No, after Thanksgiving. And oh, I love Christmas. I love it. Love it. Boston's best flips in the chat says reselling is what she is most excited about right now in life. So that's cool when you when you're new to something, especially I think it's it's amazing. Right. What are you uh, excited about most, Chris? Wait, before I answer, a lavender clothesline. Karen wants to know where you got your background. eBay. Oh, oh eBay. I think. I think eBay or um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was eBay, and it took like a week to get here, but I think it was from in the U.S. It was like fourteen dollars, but warning, it did come. I don't know if you can see it anymore, actually. Well, there's kind of a line. It came all folded up and oh. steaming it. Um, it wasn't fun. So make sure you have a steamer. But, it, I mean, for $14, it's a 5 by 7 Like, it covers all of the room I need for, like, my mannequin and doing clothes. So, yeah. When you're comparing it to, like, $50 they want for the other ones, it's a good deal. Um, thank you, Redneck, Red Neckerson's Resales. Thank you for the dollar twenty-seven super chat. That is an awesome username. Uh, thanks for the shout out in the chat. So, what am I looking forward most to? I'm looking most forward to living with my girlfriend. So nice. we're gonna figure that out and get a place together um, by the first of the year. So we've been dating for a long time, six years. So it's time to hey, what up my game. six years? Wow. Is, it, is it six years yet, or is it a little under? A little over six years. Oh dang! Wow, that's that's an awesome something news different, Chris, that we hear from you. So, yeah, and, 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 and so I get charged. It's not gonna be in that place that you're living at. You find no. something bigger. Something different? Uh, no, smaller. This place is way too big for for two people. Oh, uh, I want I want like a two car. I want like a condo situation with two a two car garage. I think that would be best for me. Oh. Um, but then. Yeah, she, she's charging me a quarter care a year, so we're already at one and a half. That's expensive, so I've got to hurry up and figure it out. It's not a half carrot, thank goodness, Michelle. It's not half carrot. It's quarter carrot a year. I literally, so, I, I told Jacob that same. Like as soon as I heard you tell me that, I said, "Okay, Jacob, I'm implementing this rule." It started five years ago because Jake and I've been together for five and a half years now, so we're not far behind y'all. But yeah. yeah, you're still too young though. Yeah, you're your baby. You guys can be dating for a long forever is a long time, girl. I mean, I'm gonna be. I'm not. I refuse to be says, one says of the, you're old. I refuse to be one of those couples that they say, "Oh, how long have you been together?" And it's like, "Oh, we've been married for two years, but we've been together for 40. Like that's not gonna happen to me. <laughs> I'm not gonna that say. could that literally could happen no. to you. Like we've been no, married for a while, I'm, I'm been not gonna be for ten. I'm not gonna say we've been together for we've been married for two years, but we've been together for twelve. <laughs> no. Yeah, you got a point. I understand your point. It's so Chris, weird. It it's ten people think it's, you've only been together for like a year, and it and it's right. like it, it's. Chris, is it gonna be further out or the same area? Like, is it outside the city or in with Louisiana? 
I'm, I'm thinking of moving to Atlanta with you. Why not? Try something different. Oh, dude, let's do it. What are you yeah. moving to Louisiana? What the hell? Houses are way cheaper down there. So here. you're thinking you're you're considering out of state, Chris? Well, I, yeah, no, for sure, considering out of state, and I'm considering being a crawfish fisherman. So maybe I will come down to Louisiana. Oh, if dude. I could, I could, I could resell seafood. Please yeah. come move down here, Chris. Oh, dude, that's seafood. so crazy, awesome, man. Like, so I guess you feel the same excitement I feel. Just something well, different. It's not, it's not um reasonable living living expenses here. Like, just the, the yeah. amount of hustle required to just exist is is yeah. annoying. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm just um, like, if you're just in a different state, you'd probably be balling already. With just to, know, it's tough. Like, to be real with you, like if you seriously, not here, but I'm just saying to give everyone an idea. We live like in the middle, uh, in a nice area of Baton Rouge, like capital city, mm -hmm. college town. We have a three bedroom, large condo, high ceilings. Like it's a beautiful place. We have a lake right behind us and we own it and it's $135,000. Oh my god. Wow. Oh my gosh. So and it is a be it's a beautiful complex. It's a wonderful right. part of town. You can do a lot more story on your Instagram so me and Chris could at least consider it. It's it's, so the, it's, the, a, it's like five it's like a five minute drive to the heart of LSU campus. Like this it is incredible for a hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. I'm just saying. I live in this like cookie cutter house that everything is fake. The wood that's in the background of all my pictures is laminate. It's like cheaply built, one point four million. You know oh what I mean? Gosh. Like, uh, and the guy that I rent from collects like a million dollars a month in rent. Yeah. Um, so I mean, like the the amount of wealth here is like not even doesn't even make sense. So so what's what are you considering? What are you considering? Like, what are the biggest factors for you? So that's a good point. My girlfriend just visited Austin this weekend with her girlfriends to see what they like. Oh. And she and she likes it. She likes Texas. Like we, we both love barbecue. She loves yeah. fried chicken. So Ooh. she's if like you, we if you move to Texas, that is Well the, the thing is she really she really likes fried chicken. So like that's like her thing. So there's Ooh, a lot better. I love Austin. I, I've I've heard I've actually Googled Austin. So Austin and, and uh in Atlanta is are are like two uh, destination. We're just leaning more more to Atlanta because they have like six Nike outlets <laughs> within two hour radius. That's insane. That's awesome, Chris. That's that's amazing. And she's um, and then she's also. Um, but the thing is, she wants to make at least thirty grand a month pre tax combined. Mm -hmm. Because she's like, that's that's a cool place to be. No debt, thirty grand income, low overhead. Then you can do a lot of stuff with that. Oh, for you sure. Can, you can travel a lot. You can, you know. So that's the um, income goal. And then she doesn't. Um, oh, what she said was like with my YouTube channel. She was like, if you, uh, I want you to make sure that you produce, if you, that's to a consistent amount of content and make sure that it's fun. And that has right. worked for me. And I think this is important for reselling, for everything mm -hmm. that I do. Consistency plus fun oh. usually equals a good way of making money. If you if you can yeah. do it, as long as the um, thing that you do serves somebody else. Yeah. Like if you if you for example you love um, uh, bone you know archery, mm -hmm. um, you can make a living off of teaching people tutorials on how to make archery better. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, if it's useful to somebody, and if, if right. people for some reason don't think that's useful, then it's going to be very difficult to do it, dude. So. That's that's why I love out hustled, you know. Like when we do all that traveling with me and Glenn, it's amazing, and a lot of you know, and what the main the biggest thing is really helping people out to discover you know the opportunities around their area and their city. That's why we're going to their city. So that they don't have an excuse like, oh, you don't find, we can't find that in our city, right? And then we go there and then show them like, hey, we found this. You should be finding this. Yeah, um, and like um, there's um, Nicholas, who's in one of my other videos. He only does e-commerce in the United States, but he lives in Canada. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that was like, it, it's cool arbitraging where you live versus where you are. Like if, if Ken were to decide, 
he's only going to sell Nike on Amazon. Probably not likely, but if he decides that's the route that he wants to go, he could figure out how to get all the inventory out and have no inventory in house. He could live in a different country. Yeah. So you can do you can do whatever you want. Uh, you know, like 140 grand for a home here is considered really, really, really um, um, cheap. But in another country, that's considered a mansion. Like there's homes. Um, oh, I have a VA sure. that lives in Pakistan. I pay him six bucks an hour to do graphic design for my company, and it's the equivalent of a six-figure income. His house costs twenty-one grand in Pakistan, wow. dude. And he's like, "I'm telling you, crazy." I'm telling you, uh, two hundred fifty k, we can buy like a five-bedroom house in the Philippines in an island on a beachfront. I want that's one of my goals. Like, I want to have that. Uh, like, literally, like that's an insane amount there. But if you think you know, and then you can finance it and get a loan for it and pay like what? Pay like 600 to 800 bucks a month for that kind of house in the Philippines. That's that's amazing. But yeah, I'm excited for this move, man. Uh, we're thinking about like within the next month, we're going to start packing everything. Dang. Cool. Catherine, where would you live if you could live anywhere? Texas? Or Louisiana? Right where I'm at. I love uh, where I'm at. Like, I don't, I, and I've, I've traveled. It's not like I haven't seen. Okay, well, let's, if I, if someone gave me, if someone paid, like, gave me an allowance to where I didn't have to work, <laughs> is that, like, this situation? Oh, spoiled. 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 No, after. no, I'm saying, like, if for some reason, if, if I, for some reason, had a hundred billion dollars like i didn't need to worry about living expenses or like working is that what you're telling me <laughs> because then i know where i would live but as far as like oh i don't and the, like it's the oh it's so hard to say i wouldn't like raise my family in baton rouge like i'd go back to texas like that's my ultimate goal like i just don't i don't i think baton rouge is a wonderful college town but i don't like Want to right. raise it That's here. probably why you love it there because you're still in college, but I don't think me and Chris would like it there. Yeah, I don't say y'all moved to Baton Rouge, but Texas is wonderful. Like, whenever I. I like that. I, I love Texas. I've been. Chris, all well, over what about the heat? Can huh? you take heat in Texas? I'm asking Chris. Because he's no, in. I, li I, I like the heat. I, I like Chicago. I don't mind the cold, too. So Dude, I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't mind I like living the in the cold, suburbs. Unless. You like the cold unless you have to shovel like two feet of snow. Yeah, I could never live. No. Uh, also, I like year-round garage sales because I like that hustle. So. Oh you know. yeah, that one. So that's so, in like. So yeah, Atlanta. Atlanta is. Uh, it's saying like uh, their their lows are like forties, and then their highs are like high seventies. I'm like, that's perfect. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, Let me see. it gets like it, it, like maybe right now, but like it, it does not. The, the highest it ever gets in Atlanta during the summer is not seventy degrees. That it's high called Hotlanta. Hotlanta. No, it's like high nineties. Let's see. But anyway, Thomas Thomas 89. is in Florida. Did you guys consider 89. Florida? Uh, it's too hot. I've been there a few times. I have a. I really, I, really I don't, like Miami. Huh? I like Miami a lot. But it's not for living. Like you're thinking I, about. I could. You know, I could be that guy. I could have the Lamborghini. Uh, <laughs> I could do. I could do steroids. We could have. Been, <laughs> <laughs> we could I could be not that be guy. I could. Anymore. <laughs> I'd have to like. Someone say, "Oh, do you know Chris Tinkale the Bay?" I say, "What? Who? No, not anymore." <laughs> South Beach. Yeah. Beach, I mean, Cali, if, if people are saying there's a culture shock, if you go to Austin, there's no culture shock. I definitely don't think so. If you go to like where I live, like in rural Texas, it's not a culture shock, but it's different. Houston wasn't bad. We were we were just there. Houston, I love. I mean, I feel like Houston is like an Atlanta vibe. I uh, love Houston. Uh, I live in Houston. Chicago, I like Chicago, but dude, the cold is windy city. It's bad. Like, I mean, I've lived here. You know, I've had four four winters here in Cincinnati. It's just that 
you're driving in snow and everything like that, accidents and stuff like that. And then I could never drive a, a really, really nice car without a garage here and have it parked over the winter because salt will just eat it. So I'm excited to have a no snow area that I can finally get a nice car and just not worry about. Maybe I'll get a Ferrari, Chris, with you. You drive a Lambo, I'll drive a Ferrari. I know, right? And then we'll race Porsches on the weekend or Sunday Sunday car. You, you attract what you are, not what you want. So I'm going to channel my inner Lamborghini and attract <laughs> it to myself using the law of attraction. Uh, <laughs> if, I just, if I just think about it, it'll be in my driveway. Uh, so zen. <laughs> it's very zen. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. Considering, yeah, that's true. Just to give you guys a, a point, like I live in an expensive part of California, but most of California is rural. I could live in the sticks out here too. So I mean, whatever. Or is that a derogatory term? I could live in the woods out here too. <laughs> I don't think the sticks is a derogatory term. <laughs> what about stick no, people? Like, and that's and that's what um, Boston best flips talking about. Um, how culture is always different depending on a specific location. That's one thing with Texas that like I always found insane. So I've been all over Texas. Um, at one point, whenever Jacob was in tech school for the military, he, he the big base that he trained at was 20 miles. Um, it was in North Texas, 20 miles past it was Oklahoma. So I've been to the tippy top of Texas and I lived in the Southeast and um, I've gone hunting in West Texas and a lot of my family lives um, in near Houston. And t it's like four different states. Like it's insane. The difference between Houston and Austin, it, they're like complete opposites. Dallas. Um, Do you think Texas should be its own country? Yes, like I, I like I love. No, not not really, but I love Texas. Like as far as I don't know, I've just always and I've traveled a lot of places, and I've always just I've always loved Texas, and I love Louisiana because they're very similar. Um, I like living in Baton Rouge just because it's where I go to school, uh, and Baton Rouge is fun. Like yeah, for you know, not for like raising a family, but um, I love Rudy's barbecue. Rudy's barbecue is really good. I'm going to go back and just eat it every day. I need, that's one thing. Barbecue here in Louisiana, it's not that good. So I want, I, I like Atlanta because they have a very big airport too. So I need an airport. I need more flights outside of, uh, uh, and it's not an expensive airport. We actually checked it. Cincinnati airport is outrageous, stupid, crazy. Someone just said they can't picture me out in the woods hunting, and yeah. it irritates me. So I'm gonna show you a uh, picture. You'd probably be on your uh, high heels. No, honey. Makeup. No. And Hold on. You'd probably be bringing a blow dryer and a mirror. No, we're literally in a trailer in the middle of nowhere in freaking <laughs> in northeast Texas. Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna find the. I thing. think it's on your Facebook. I think I saw it in your Facebook. It may be. I don't know, but I'm gonna show all them because. Yeah, she does. She does. She can't catch anything because she's all like, uh, perfumed up and everything like that. So all. Every, catch? All animals. Did you just say that like you catch deer? Is that what you're telling me? You catch it? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, my we... gun is not pink. Is this ser? Are y'all serious right now? <laughs> I said my gun was pink. I'm so irritated. So y'all need fried chicken in a good airport and barbecue. Yes. That's and for me I need Nike outlets. <laughs> and Chris, Atlanta has a really good Korean barbecue place. I don't know if they have it there in uh East Coast. Uh Korean barbecue. It's called Iron Age. I, I love, love food. I love look, Korean my barbecue. my favorite thing in the world is long dinners with people like i bet you i, I without question if i had a, a four hour dinner with you and Catherine, it would uh, be a 10 out of 10 in fun i told you when y'all come to baton rouge i'm gonna Dude, i'm gonna I, that's why i love korean barbecue because they just bring in the food and you cook the food and it's unlimited and we can just sit down and talk and chill it's like 
that's a perfect life. And then have our phones going kaching, and then we ship them the next day. Okay, so look, I don't know if this counts as gore. There's not gore. Whatever. I'm just gonna <laughs> show it. An RV with a premium store. Oh wow, that's so, brutal. We talked about this. We want to make a premium. Whoa, what is that? That's it's me and the deer that I just killed last year. For all the people. Oh saying, yeah, yeah. No, I saw that picture. It's a good picture. I can't imagine Catherine yeah, out in the woods. It's a very well staged photo. I'm so irritated. Um, so irritated. Uh, the RV. So yeah. Photoshop. Uh, is the, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. But what I was thinking is, we make a premium store on wheels, <laughs> right? So we have, um, we make a store. It's a premium store, and then I we can drive it, or, and we can just share it. And your job is just to make sure that it stays at 600 to 1,000. Whatever sells, you replenish it, and we send to the next person. That way, we can share that. Because I don't want an RV sitting in the driveway. I don't want to be those people. I want it constantly roaming through the U.S. with resellers in it. That would be cool. Like, uh, I'll take three months, you take three months, and then somebody Exactly. Take... That would be dope. And then you get to go wherever you want. You know, like, like I want to go to uh, Lake Havasu in uh, Arizona. Have you guys right? seen have a soup by falls. Yeah. Uh, dude, we need to go there like a reseller hiking. I think <laughs> it should have three or three or four beds in the premium oh, store on wheels. Hold on. Jacob's in the chat because this is true. So Jacob and I have a, a handgun, a Glock, and I was, we were at the gun store and I saw a turquoise Glock and I was looking at, he's in the chat because everyone's talking about how I have a pink gun. Yeah. See, we know that was Photoshop for sure. That was not Photoshop. I actually have the mount. And the Who pays for the repairs? Uh, that will be uh, uh expenses. <laughs> That'll be maintenance expense. And whoever it's the has the whoever gets the Lamborghini first has to pay for all the expenses. So Chris, you can go ahead. All yeah, I have to do is visualize it. If I just yeah. visualize it, I'll just take a break from social media for twenty four hours and visualize it, and it It'll will happen. show up. It will. I'll manifest it. Manifest okay. it. He'll wake up in the in the rental store, uh, downtown, and then he's gonna rent and he's gonna vlog for one day with a Lamborghini. In my garage. Yeah. <laughs> hey 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 hey. <laughs> Do that. Don't skip. Uh, don't don't skip this ad yet. But I just want to show you how I make multi million dollars in my garage with a Lamborghini selling <laughs> loadings. Let me show you how to make a million dollars for my Lamborghini selling used clothing. <laughs> look, look at me. Oh, sorry. Those are just my 12 Lamborghinis in the background. Don't don't mind that. Yeah, we haven't seen Jacob on the chat. When is he, he going to join you? I don't right. know. I can, hold on. Let me open up the door and I can grab Izzy because I know she's waiting for me right here. Hold on. Hold on. Time to meditate. Um... We're gonna need to have a significant other show. We need to. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Come on. Come on. No, you have Boston's best flips. You have to stay in the premium store RV. It's gonna have three luxury beds in it. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's gonna be like a a sixty footer like bus or something. <laughs> Y'all. We actually. We no, not sixty footer. That's too long. It's gonna be a, like a forty footer. Oh, oh my god! Look. It's gonna be a toy hauler RV that's gonna have uh that's gonna have a uh... so Chris did you know so a lot of this race car uh, race car teams they actually have a smart car because a smart car will fit in a trailer and then it's legal to drive around when you're going out grocery shopping so mm. no so one said hello travel, to we could travel around on an RV and have a smart car in the trailer. And then source with a with a smart car all over the place and just have a roof carrier or something. We have to let uh, Catherine talk so we can see the doggy. Okay. Okay. Look, this is Izzy. Oh, look at them! Look at them! She's a Shih Tzu Chihuahua and she's my child. Sure. But if I ever say my baby, it's not a human baby. It's this baby. Izzy. Izzy, you're famous. 
Uh, yeah, she's a Shih Tzu Chihuahua. She's I trying like to it. play. She keeps trying to bite my hands. He's look, look over here. I have to go, guys. It's date night. Yeah, I was about to say you're late. All right, late. so uh, so y'all uh, y'all gonna talk about where are you moving now, huh? Yeah, we got to think about where we're moving. Maybe we'll move into the hustler reseller, the reseller mansion, and mansion. then we will. Oh my uh, gosh! And then we can uh, like have a twelve-bedroom reseller mansion. Yeah, and then they can pay to stay at like monthly rent so that they can. Oh uh, shit! Uh, that would be dope. Oh, Izzy is a year and a half. Do you guys want to stay on, or you guys want to, you want to jump off? No, we're hopping off. I have yeah, to. Yeah, hopping off. I have to right, eat. Guys. Thanks, right, guys, for thanks coming. Everybody. See you guys next week on our Reseller Open Q&A. Have a great night. Get some listings done. Peace out. Bye. Bye.